And we are live. Thank God it's Friday. Finally. It's been one of those weeks. Um, before I get into what I want to talk about and what we're going to do, by the way, no whiskey tasting during the live stream, only whiskey drinking because it's been one of those weeks. <laughs> so let me say hi to everybody and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to drinking because that's what we do. We got some business to do here. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Lopez, thank you very much for tuning in. OG Brick 420. How you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Some good stuff, man. <laughs> Mike Meyer, thank you much for tuning in. Steve A. Uh, let's see. Ear Whiskey. Matt, I sent you a link. I know you said you can't join in, but if you could give me two minutes, that'd be fine. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Ear Whiskey, love the channel. Long format. Uh, more in-depth conversations. I really, really like the channel. He's over in Denmark. Um, he's small but growing. I've been on the channel. Vin from... Um, no nonsense. Whiskey's been on there. Aqua Vitae's been been on there, and I think he's really found his niche, his style, his his boogie, you know. And I think this is going to really work out for him. Um, so, sometimes you may be more listening than watching, but definitely worth uh, checking out. I'm getting more and more into more uh, long format. In fact, I just watched and listened to um, Joe Rogan had. Um, the guy that played Stark on uh, Iron Man, um, Downey Jr., John Downey Jr., not Martin Downey Jr., um, Robert Downey Jr., just add him on there, real, real cool interview. Anyway, so Ear Whiskey is sort of the <coughs> Joe Rogan of the whiskey world, bringing something different, adding something different to um, the recipe of whiskey tubers that are out there. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what channel does in 2020. Uh, Mark? Saliba, thank you very much for tuning. He says, are you still using Margarita Mix? Yes, yes. It's been a busy week. I like things simple. When I, when, If I'm going to do a, a, a margarita proper, maybe next summer, then I'll take the time to mess around and do all that stuff and experiment. But I'm really not much of a, a tequila drinker or margarita drinker, but I definitely will later. This is an easy man's Texas uh, whiskey margarita. All right, Jimmy Jazz, thank you much for tuning in. Kevin Miato, thank you much for tuning in. I don't think I've seen you for a while. Robert Licorice, Rob, my man, we need to talk. I want to have you on probably towards the end, closer to the end of uh, my Texas Whiskey Marathon because um, that's what I'm going to do, your Magic Manicorn. Um, uh, many will definitely want to have you on, but thank you much for tuning in. Go Habs, thank you much for tuning in. Charles Ashworth, Whiskey Straight, thank you much for tuning in. The Urban Explorer is back in the house. Uh, if, if, and he's in Scotland. He was just doing, I think, if I recall, the Isle of Skye. So he's a van guy. He tries around in a van. Talks about being a van, being a van dude. <coughs> uh, we met through Nick Nimmin's channel. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Nick Nimmin here in just a minute. Um, it, so it's, But it kind of goes parallel to mine because I'm not, strictly speaking, a whiskey review channel. Yeah, I've done whiskey reviews. I give points and whatever. But for me, it's more exploration. Going to Scotland, going to Texas, going to Kentucky, visiting California distilleries. It's more about exploration and going somewhere, enjoying the travel, the journey, and all that, than it is simply about, I went to the store, bought a bottle, and this is my you know, two cents on the bottle, right? And I've done those two, but it's just what I do a little bit, to, and my channel tends to be a little bit more academic. Anyway, the exploration, the adventure, getting out there and seeing places and meeting people, engaging with cultures, um, is, is sort of half of... Uh, what I want to do in whiskey and what I've always done in wine. Andrew Spurrell, thank you much for tuning in. Uh, so, da -da -da -da. all righty. So, why, again, we're not tasting whiskey, we're drinking whiskey. Why do we drink whiskey? Why, why do we drink? Several things. One, Doug Crystal, thank you much for tuning in. One, to celebrate. Uh, a wedding, a birthday, an anniversary, uh, a newborn baby, a new job, something, you know. So we drink to celebrate. Then there's those other times, like we had last Friday. Um, we did uh, uh, a memoriam for Neil Parrott. We drink to commiserate a death of a friend, a death of a family member, 
um, some sort of major tragedy, whether it's us individually or in terms of our family or our nation, right? Uh, we drink to commiserate. And then there are those times in which it's not the end of the world, really shouldn't bitch or moan, groan, or complain. But you have those kind of like, what the hell, man, moments. What the hell? And sometimes you can have a week where it's like every day, it's like, geez, are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What the hell, man? It's way, you know, hey, way out on the whiskey friend. Awesome over there in the UK. Thank you much for tuning in. It, you can have those where it's not just a moment. It's not, not just a day. It's like day after day, something different. <laughs> it's just like, what, what? If I had the hair, if I had hair, I'd be going, ah. you know, <laughs> this has been one of those weeks. And so it's one of those weeks where you look forward to Friday because I don't have to get up in the morning on Saturday. You can kind of chill out, hang out with your friends, maybe have them over. By the way, so next Friday, I may or may not go live. I'm going to have a bunch of people over here next Friday. Um, and we're going out to dinner, then coming over to my place, and we're going to open and drink anything on my in my whiskey collection. Um, there may be, there'll be like, like six people over here next week. I'm going to ask them if they want to do live stream. If they don't, they don't. So it may be a party here with six people in here drinking whiskeys. We'll see how it goes. I, I haven't asked them yet. Uh, what are you drinking, Alan? Alan, we are drinking a Texas whiskey margarita. So I posted my video of um, Maverick Distillery yesterday uh, and in the video. So this is a, a basically a white whiskey. The, the makeup of this spirit is a bourbon makeup, but it's not aged long enough in oak to be called a bourbon. So you look at that. If you hadn't seen my review, check it out. And in the video I did, uh, I thought it smelled similar to a tequila, um, green citrus, uh, maybe a little green apple, some jalapeno, um, a little bit of white pepper. Uh, so it kind of in some ways seemed very, very similar to uh, um, a tequila, most, mostly a Blanco tequila, white tequila, clear tequila. But it also had this like kind of chalky minerality to it or kind of reminds me of you, you have freshly put up Drywall, kind of reminds me of that. And so I thought, well, okay, what am I going to do with this? It's probably not something I would want to drink straight all the time. But I thought, this would make a really good mixture. And let's try making a margarita. So if you haven't seen that video, in that video, I didn't pre-record. I didn't try it. The first time I tried making a margarita with this whiskey uh, was in well, recording that video. And it turned out pretty good. Um Charge out with says, sounds like a good time to go visit my sister in Folsom. Um, <coughs> um, Air Whiskey says, hey, Matt says, I'm off air. Hope you have a, a good stream. Thanks, buddy. And uh, sometime again later this year, we got to get together, either me on your channel or you on my channel, and just uh, chew the fat, shoot the shit, and uh, do some drinking. So, uh, but uh, thanks for tuning in. So, um, anyway. So you have those celebration, congratulations on the, you know, uh, Mazel Tov or whatever, whatever, whatever you use for the celebration. Uh, San Juva, cheers, you know, celebration, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, holidays, whatever, for, for drinking. And then there's the, you know, commiserating, someone you cared a lot about, someone who's influential on your life, passed away. Uh, and then there's just like, God, dude, are you freaking serious? This has been my week. All week again, not catastrophic, uh, not a catastrophic, just the stupid shit. Some examples if you guys ever had some stupid shit that makes you go, What the hell, man? Put it right there, put, put it in the comment section. Okay, it could be you step out of your house, no one else is home, you step out of your house, and just as the door closes, a voice in your head says, Hey, dumbass. You left her keys in the house. Why didn't that little voice tell you ahead of time, don't forget your keys? And now you're locked out of your house. It's cold outside. You're in a hurry to get to work. Ah. Or you go to work. You bring your lunch. So you're good there. But on the way home from work, the red light comes on on your dashboard and you're just about out of gas. And all of a sudden you realize, 
oh crap, I don't have my wallet. And you're like, okay, I've got 30 miles to go to get home. I might have one gallon in my tank. I don't have enough gas to get home. And I don't have any money. What the hell am I gonna do? Ah! Okay. Um, Whiskey Street says, you're saying what, you're, what we're all thinking and have been through, nailed it. Exactly. It's the, that kind of the bullshit. So, um, there's, there's a gazillion of stupid, stupid things that can go on. Um, oh, let's make it whiskey related. How many of you, right? Man, you get this killer bottle. You're looking forward to it. You're going to open it up, right? Take the, take the wrapping off. You go to pull the top off and poof, the cork inside breaks off in the bottle. Ah! Or even worse, here's what's worse. Here's, here's what's worse. With wine, and it, you find out it's, you buy this super expensive wine, been sitting out for a long time. It's a wine you want to show off and share with your friends. And it's got triclonal, so it's got cork taint. It smells like a wet dog. It smells like an old book library. It just stinks. You're like, ah, oh, son of a bitch, right? Those are the kind of moments. Well, it's kind of like if you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, excuse me, Friday, you know, you get to Friday and it's been every day has been like this. You, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it almost makes you look forward to Friday, not only to be off from work, but then you can really, really, it seems like the, the pain of the bullshit makes whiskey taste better. <laughs> the pain and the, of the bullshit, the agony, the stress, the irritation of the bullshit <laughs> makes whiskey taste better because <laughs> we appreciate it more for its medicinal advantages. All right. So, <laughs> so there's three things. There's three things you got to have. Um, three things you got to have <laughs> dealing, dealing with day-to-day -day bullshit. All right. So I got some limes here. God, that smells good. I got some limes there. So I'm going to use a different glass. So I did my review. I used this. I did a margarita in this. Instead, I'm going to use, it looks like kind of almost like a margarita glass. This is a Riedel glass. It's for uh, oaked Chardonnays. Sort of shaped like um, uh, a margarita glass. I don't have any margarita glasses. Maybe I should get some. Maybe it doesn't really matter. Um, so basically take a lime, put it around the top. Ooh, put a little too much. It's, oops. It's for flavor as well as getting the salt to stick. I like this. So this, the top here, right, this is for taking – Oh. Fudge. I just had one of those moments. You know those moments where everything's going wrong and something goes wrong? <laughs> it just happened live here on my channel. There is now salt everywhere. <laughs> oh, shit. Son of a bitch. It, I did not do that on purpose. This thing was not on there tight. It's like I got a pile of coke here. It's like I got a pile of cocaine here. here. All right. So there's three things you got to have. God, I can't freaking believe this. Three things you got to have when dealing with the bullshit. One, you got to have a sense of humor. If you do not have a sense of humor, if you can't laugh, Urban Explorer, thank you very much. Uh, you sent, you sent me uh, basically 10 pounds. <laughs> Whiskey Street says, exactly, exactly. This, <coughs> this has been my life all week. <coughs> That's stupid shit. It's, it's nothing, so it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just stupid shit. Um, you you got to have a sense of humor. If you don't have a sense of humor, <laughs> Ed Fordog or Ed Forog, how do you pronounce it? Thank you much for tuning in. If you don't have a sense of humor, you're screwed. You got to be able to laugh at. Um, I got salt all over the damn place. I will get a vacuum cleaner and clean this up later. 
I'm freaking believable. Let's carry on. All right. I was just I was just trying to say the top of this salt thing, the margarita salt, it has a citrus uh, thing. So if you had a lime and you just wanted the juice, this you just take this and you, you can squeeze the juice out by doing this to get the juice out. Brilliant idea. Just put this on the top of your – however, th while that's brilliant, this thing doesn't snap. It, it, it doesn't snap on there. It just sits on top of it. Smart design with this, with the citrus thing, stupid design that it doesn't snap closed. R well, not really. Kind of, sort of. Okay. M maybe it's more my fault than the containers. Or whatever. All right. Let's carry on. <laughs> Bug replicant. You're fine. Exactly. Yes, yeah, sna particularly snails. All right. <laughs> By the way, if you guys are enjoying something, uh, just put in the comment there, what are you drinking? And if you've had some bullshit this week, you want to share what kind of bullshit you're dealing with, what what kind of bullshit or, 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 or F WTF moments we're, we're drinking to? <laughs> uh, put it in the comment section. So... Uh, it's always something, always something. So when you got to have a sense of humor. Number two, um, wine and whiskey is very, 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 very much. I mean, I don't think being in the Marine Corps taught me this as well, but wine and whiskey has taught me this. You have to be able to innovate. You have to be able to overcome. So laugh about it and then overcome it. Laugh about it and then overcome it. Right? So. You're you're trying to accomplish this. Maybe it's at work. Maybe it's around the house, and shit doesn't work. The computer. Oh, here's one thing. I had this. I had this happen this week. Something with the computer. Most of my headaches are computer related. Uh, related to work. Okay. Okay. We can't get this done this way. Are you going to give up? Are you going to quit? Right. I'm sure. Be. I've. I've. Uh, um. Uh. Urban Explorer, if you're on the road and traveling and deal with car issues, van issues, I'm sure he's got a gazillion times he's had to overcome and deal with things and find other ways to get things done, right? Because automobile issues and being on the road and traveling, you're just right for stuff to go, to go wrong. Um, so you got to be able to come up with Okay, we couldn't get done this way. Be creative, be innovative, and think, what's another way we can get this done, All right? If you're familiar with... Um, Old Pulteney Distillery, all right? Old Pulteney Distillery. If you haven't seen my video on Old Pulteney or just Google Old Pulteney and look at look at the stills, that's an example where they didn't have stills that fit in the facility. Somebody, somebody that, I don't know the details, they bought these stills, they get them to the distillery, or and I don't know what the building used to, it might have been used to have been something else. And you're looking at these stills and you're going, what the fuck? These, you can't put those in here. Those won't fit in here. What are you going to do? You innovate. You overcome. You adapt. <laughs> we're going to cut off the line arm. And we're going to stick it off the side. And that'll give us our one of our distinctive styles of our spirit. Same thing in the, the wine industry because wine is much more organic, right? Uh, everything's going to ripe. Grapes don't all ripen at the same rate. Your, your white wines, your white grapes come first, Sauvignon Blanc, and then Chardonnay and Viognier and everything else. Viognier comes later. Your red wines, Pinot Noir comes before Merlot. Merlot comes before Cabernet Sauvignon. But you can have a season in which, due to the weather conditions, everything's ripening at the same damn time. You've only got so much tank, uh, room in tanks. You've only got so many bins. You've only... And if the grapes are all coming at the same time, you're like, oh, where are we going to put things? It's like having... You know, 10 pots to cook, with, cook, but you've only got four burners. You got to come up with plan B, man. You got to come up with plan B. And I've been in the, at a, I was working at a winery as an intern, and we had something go wrong. And we had to like, right now, you, you have a pipe, you have a hose that goes from uh, the, the filter thing over into the tanks or from the cask, it, it tanks into the cask, and something breaks. You got to go, oh, crud. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, geez, 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 geez. If you're going to sit there and cry and whine, okay, you're screwed. This isn't right. The world isn't working out my way. And that's one of the biggest things about the whole 
SJW whining thing. You're screwing the whole generation by, by, by making people think um, everybody needs to um, make safe spaces for them and, and working things around for them. And, um, and that life is, you deserve something in particular. No, no. Life's tough. People are a-holes. People are going to treat you like crap. Um, that's just part, part of life. Overcome. Overcome, adapt, and overcome because uh, that's what's going to help you survive, right? Sense of humor. Okay. A lot of comedians. A lot of comedians. I know I'm not doing enough drinking. A lot of comedians. Um, the reason why they got into comedy is because they've had so many hard times. Either them as an individual or their family and ethnicity, right? Okay, so in the video, I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to get into – we're going to need to get some drinking going. A lot of talking, not enough drinking. Let's get going. All right, so in the video, if you haven't seen it already, I first started off with a two-to-one, two parts um, margarita mix. This is Jose, Jose Cuervo margarita mix. This stuff is super, super, super sweet. It's about as sweet as a lime otter pop and a lot of sugar in there. Um. And I did one part of the Alamo white whiskey. It was too still. It was too sweet. So then I went uh, another part of the Alamo white whiskey. And so it was 50, 50 and it was good. I liked it better, but as I was drinking off camera after recording the video, I thought, you know, it's still a little too sweet. So what I want to do this time is I'm actually going to go two parts white whiskey, one part margarita mix. And we're going to see if that's better. So for that, so, if you have a, a, a white whiskey, maybe um, you don't like to drink it straight. Uh, yeah, add a pinch of salt, right? <laughs> maybe. So how do you overcome? How do you ever adapt? Maybe you have a whiskey. Maybe it's even a bourbon. Maybe it's a scotch. Maybe it's something else that you're not in love with. How do you overcome and over adapt? One thing you do is make cocktails. Try making a cocktail. See if it works for cocktail. And I like this. I think it's good. I think it's got good quality. I just wouldn't sit around. It's just not a sipper for me. Good, yes. Quality, yes. Sipper for me, no. I'm going to use it for, as a mixer. Not to cover up flaws, but just, just uh, the way I like it. All right. So I'm going to go two parts white whiskey. By the way, this is uh, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. Um and it's the family max bill of their bourbon. So it's the same max bill of the bourbon. I don't know what that is. I think it's got enough spice in it that it seems like it's got some rye in it. Um, I don't know how much, but I'm pretty sure. All right. Do, 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 do. So have a sense of humor. Overcome and adapt. I'm going to go three to one. And the third thing is have a drink. Have a sense of humor, overcome and adapt. And the third part is have a drink. And that's the third reason why we drink, to celebrate, to commiserate, and just to get over the daily bullshit. <laughs> so I'm going to put in here real quick a link. If you want to join me, um, I'm going to put it right here. If you want to join me, there we go. In the live stream, there is the link. Uh, Urban Explorer, I would love if you're still watching. I'd love to have you on, man. Uh, we can talk about your explorations and stuff. The need to over uh, overcome and adapt. All right. Um, hold on. I lost paint. Have I put any of this in yet? I don't think so. I was, I, I was so busy talking. I'm losing losing. Uh, uh, track did i someone let me hey did, did you guys paying attention did i put any in, in the mix in yes or no did i put mix in maybe i could smell it i could taste oh hold on nope all right so i put three parts whiskey i'm gonna put one part Looks like all whiskey. Yeah, Mike, I think you're right. And one part margarita mix. Now, this may be too strong the other way. I can always, I can always, it's easier to add a little bit of margarita mix. The other thing about whiskey, you know, so I'm gonna talk about some of the recent videos I had. 
Yeah, talk a little bit about a little bit. Speaking of ad adaptation, do you, have you guys seen my Ardbeg Ultimate Dram video? Put yes or no if you've seen my Ardbeg Ultimate uh, Dram video. Uh, Geronimus Broders or Broders, thank you much for tuning in. Emily Chambers, thank you much for tuning in. Give this a little shaky shaky. Uh, OG Brick 420. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's super short. Andrew King says he saw it. So there's a story behind that video that I haven't told anybody. Uh, Charles Ashworth says yes. So here's a story behind that video. And if Urban Explorer is watching, he'll know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna, this may be a melt. I'm going to drink some water out of it. There we go. Go ahead. says yes. All right. So I met Urban Explorer through Nick Nimmin. Nick Nimmin is a YouTuber guru. Guru Captain 3D, thank you much for tuning in. Um, in the sense that he he's a YouTuber who tells people how to be a good YouTuber. A lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, how to navigate the YouTube environment, how to <coughs> be successful, and so forth. And I'm supportive of him and his brother, D. Nimmin. So Nick typically does live uh, on Saturdays and his brother D live on uh, Sundays. D focuses on uh, being a YouTuber from your smartphone. But the, both of them are usually there on Saturdays. And that's where I met uh, the Urban Explorer from. So uh, a little while back, Nick, right, his, okay, he's not, I am a hobbyist when it comes to YouTubing or whiskey tubing. That's his business. Okay, so for Nick, that's his business. That's what he does for a living, right? Anyway, he got sick. I don't know exactly what it is, but basically he had laryngitis. Okay, your business, <coughs> excuse me, your business is being a YouTuber, instructing people on how to navigate and do YouTube, and now you've lost your voice. What are you going to do? <coughs> excuse me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to cry? You're going to take the time off? What are you going to do? Let's take a sip. <coughs> Sorry. I think I inhaled some salt. <clears throat> yep. Uh, go have says porn. Um, so Nick Nimmin, if you don't know who he is, he looks like he could be my much younger brother. Bald. He's, his, his beard is much more closely shaven and wears glasses. In fact, they call me the uncle, uh, the drunk uncle Nimmin, uh, as a joke. Okay, the ratio on this. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So three parts whiskey, one part. Um, I like that a lot better. One part. Um, Margarita mix, three to one, not 50 50, but three to one. I, I like the ratio. You, the, 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 the alcohol, alcoholic beverage, what are you using in there? The tequila needs to overcome the, the super sweetness of the margarita mix or counterbalance it is what I should say. By the way, is the counterbalance it so it's not super sweet, but the sweetness of the margarita mix takes the bite out of the alcohol and then the flavors of your mix and the flavors of your spirit tequila in this case white whiskey um have to be able to work together really 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 well so anyway so nick um he had laryngitis he was out for i don't know over a week or whatever i was mean, had laryngitis for a week so what he did was he did a video and it was absolutely brilliant in which he didn't speak but he was getting his message across very creatively by holding up these cards. And it wasn't just a dude holding up cards to say things. He did it really, really creatively. And I found the video not only informative, but creative on how to convey a message. Because you see someone flipping cards, and you see them talking, and you're like, so what's going on here? You know, it's different, and you're like, What's going on here? So it's different. It grabbed your attention, um, but it was done really artistically. I thought it did really, really, really well. And I was inspired 
by Nick Nimmin doing that video to say, you know what would be really cool? How could I convey uh, a review of a whiskey? In this case, it was, uh, uh, oh, it was a 50-50 blend of the Ardbeg Supernova and the Ardbeg um, Corey Vrecken. How can I convey the essence of that blend without using words? And if you haven't seen the video, if you go back and watch it, now that I've given you a behind the scenes, you know, commentary on it, mm, this could be dangerous. It's so delicious, so easy to drink, especially if it was a hot day. If this was a summer day and you're hanging on the porch, it's a hot day, man, you could drink this and just get kablamoed really quick. But it's wintertime. Usually, I would, this, this is not something I'd be in the mood for in the middle of winter, but, you know, whatever. Anyway. I thought, wow, that's really, really creative. I want to do a video in which I I convey my thoughts and emotional reaction to a whiskey, but without using words. And so if you watch the video, pay attention. First of all, everything is in black and white with the exception of the labels in the bottle, right? It creates a little bit, sort of a, a little more dramatic and... Uh, uh, contrast between the whiskey and me. So I'm in black and white and the whiskey and the whiskey is in color. Number two, I remain totally like emotionless, dead still doing this. Totally emo just dead still or oh, for the most part, to, like straight faced, straight faced. And then, you know, the flash of the 50%, 50% in the bottles. And then when I drink it, my all my review is in my facial expressions. And then I used, okay, if you saw the video, put in the comments here, what did I do to convey the, the power of the whiskey? Just type it in there if you saw it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's nice. Mm, 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 mm. Does anybody remember what I did? It was the only sound in the entire video. Um, Alan says, uh, enjoy the margarita, buddy. Got to go. Great show as usual. See you later, Alan. If you guys aren't familiar with Alan, uh, the whiskey friend, he's over. He's, he's from Glasgow, Scotland, but he's in Manchester, England. Great guy to watch. Great reviews. Definitely check him out. And I had him on about a year ago or so. Uh, on my channel. Anyway, in case you don't remember, I had an atomic explosion, which fits, you know, in terms of the, the, the power of the whiskey and then the smoke. So now, did it get a ton of, re did it get a ton of uh, views? Is that something which is going to show up on trending video? <coughs> trending videos? Is anybody searching for that? No, but I don't care. I don't care. I enjoy interacting with you all. I... Enjoy seeing my channel grow, but for me, it's always this is always about the whiskey. It's, it's about the exploration. It's about the art of doing video. It's about creativity. It's about community and interacting with people. The last thing I care about necessarily is, wow, so and so has fifteen thousand subscribers, and I only have four thousand subscribers, or someone's got thirty thousand subscribers, and I only have, it. It doesn't matter. What matters is I really like doing what I'm doing, and I really enjoy the process. I enjoy interacting with the people, and it's my exploration of whiskey in terms of what I'm tasting and where I'm going when I'm traveling, and uh, sharing you, inviting y'all to come along. Now, hmm, having said that, so I did my top 10 for 2019, which the video did actually very well. Arthur Lopez says, man, you're underplayed at the incredibly of Arbalar Abuna Batch 64. Even the neck uh, pour tastes amazing. It is a very much a great whiskey. It is a very much a great whiskey. It's not only, it's a, it's a you know, basically a cast strength whiskey. Great blend. I'm trying to get the salt away from the edge of the table. Um, but also, it's like 80 to 90 bucks. So it's a really good single malt scotch for under 100 bucks, at least until all these tariffs go. I don't know how that's uh, what's going to happen then. 
And that's – so it has a really good quality price ratio. So I agree with you 110%. Totally agree with you on that. So um, so when I did my top 10 videos, right? Now, I can only put in my top 10 video whiskeys that I reviewed. Most of my whiskeys that I review come from my travels. Consequently, most of my whiskeys that are going to be in my top 10 are going to come from distilleries. And I had a bunch of people – Bitch, moan, groan, and complain. Alan says, uh, Eric, it must have been that bad last year that you've never invited me back. Lol. Anyway, um, I had people complain and accuse me of just showing it off or some stupid shit like that. Um, what good is it to review whiskeys, which I can't even get? Because, dude, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about me studying whiskey, exploring whiskey, traveling around, visiting whiskey, and sharing my journey exploration with other people. That was my number one thing compared to that, dude. See, some viewers think everything has to be catered to them and done for them. Now, there are some people who want to grow their channel. If you watch or you follow the um, whiskey tuber gurus like Brian G. Johnson, they say if you – um, <laughs> sorry, Siri was just thinking I was right. Yeah, OG Brick420 says, how dare you have a good time? <laughs> exactly. Oh, shame on me, you bad boy. Oh, how dare you? You're not doing it for me. You're not being sensitive. Okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, um, The, the 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 whiskey tuber the the two uh, excuse me the YouTube gurus say you need to figure out your audience what they want and then gear everything towards them that way you're going to get the most subscribers and the most views. No, I've never taken a poll. I have. Have you noticed? I have never taken a poll. I have never taken a poll. Um, the, in the community section, a lot of people they take polls, or whatever. I've never taken a poll. I will never take a poll. I'm not going to chase after you guys. You know, if there's 30 of you, okay, I've got 26 guys in the room. If there's 26 guys and the people in the room, am I going to chase after? Hey, Tom Mar, thank you very much for tuning in. I can't chase all of you. Uh, Chris Beaton, thank you much for tuning in. I can't chase all of you. All right. Uh, Captain 3D, if you guys haven't checked out Captain 3D's channel, um, that's Phil and Deepa. <coughs> They're here in California. They're from the UK. Check out their channel. Phil and Deepa do what they want to do on their channel. One day they're out running around, jogging around stuff. The other thing, they're visiting whiskey shops and, you know, kind of window shopping. At other times they went, you know, they went to Scotland. They bought a bunch of bottles. They're doing their thing. They're not. And, and I've, I've actually kind of talked to them a little bit. Say, hey, you know, there's some things you could do to tweak your channel to make it more whiskey tuber friendly, but whatever. They're doing their thing. I have so much respect for that. All right. Take another sip because I'm getting parched. But you see people constantly taking polls. It's not it's not about the whiskey or the wine, whatever it is they're doing polls about. It's trying to grow a channel. No, why? Now, fine. Now, I understand some people want to make it a business. They want to do this, that, and that. I get it. I get it. Um, everybody can do whatever they want to do. They do their thing, I do my thing, and we can be friends, whatever. I, it, I just, I, it's just not me. The other thing is the average whiskey tuber, excuse me, average whiskey consumer, the average wine consumer, the average what, whatever consumer, is pretty much middle to bottom shelf. So if you want to get more views, more subscribers, do reviews a bottom shelf. Because that's what people are looking for. Okay, but do I want to drink bottom shelf all the time? Do I, is that an exploration? Is that I'm not saying I'm not going to. I'm also going the. I'm not going to the other stream. I'm not doing lifestyles of the rich and famous and doing five hundred dollar bottles of whiskey every year. So I've done a few. You know, the art bag was insanely expensive. A couple of those art bags were really expensive. But I'm not, other than that, I'm not doing those. Um, Arthur Lopez said, hell, you even said it's your top 2019. Exactly. 
my favorites, right? They were my, my favorites of 2019, right? And, and that's it. But here's the other thing is my channel is about encouraging people, right, to explore, to explore, to get out. If I understand everybody, not everybody can, right? You got family, you got work, you got school, you have other responsibilities, maybe you have lack of funds, what lack of time, whatever else. I totally get that. But I want to inspire people to say, hey, you know what? Eric went and did it. He had a fear of flying. He got on a plane and he went and did it. And I've had people contact me either in the chat or email or in my Facebook group. And they said, hey, there was uh, one couple recently, uh, I think it's their 30th wedding, their 30th wedding anniversary is this year. And they're like, you know what? We're going to plan a trip. Let's let's do what Eric did. Let's go to Scotland. And I have a, uh, I have a, a modified map that tells you which distilleries are open or not. And I have uh, a guide uh, that, that helps you um, know what distilleries are open and once you want to open the public or not. And so you can download it for free from my Facebook group. And so they download it for free. And I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to hearing back from them. Eric, we went to Scotland for our 30th anniversary. <coughs> we had a fantastic time. You know, maybe they share some pictures, whatever. So on Food Quick, he went to Scotland. I thought that was awesome. I loved watching his stuff. When um, 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 Captain 3D, when they went to Scotland, I thought it was I, I, I some of their best stuff. I loved sort of uh, vicariously going through the whiskey shops with them, right? That's the point. In fact, I, in some ways, I like the way they did their thing better than the way I did mine. To be honest with you, I kind of do. Um, but, I, you know, I like what I did too. And, you know, I tried to share some photos and video, talk about the distilleries and view, review the whiskey. Um, so this has always been, this has always been about learning. It's always about exploring. It's about enjoying the journey, it's about interacting with the people, sharing whiskey times. I, out of all the other whiskey tubers have done the most traveling to meet up with fellow whiskey tubers. And this is like a brag thing. It's just because that's what I enjoy doing uh, because it's not about how can I grow the channel? It's about how can I have a great time interacting with people and talking about and, 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 and sharing whiskey. And what I'm super, 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 super happy about, and this will go starting next next weekend, is finally having a house where I can play host. Um, there's plenty of room here and uh, have people over and have a whiskey party, right? And I'll probably do some wine gigs as well for my sommelier friends, come out from Napa or whatever. Ah, tasty. So, uh, in fact, uh, Phil, now that you're in the house, I'm looking at, so my my Texas Whiskey Marathon will finish up at right around the end of uh, March. So three months of doing Texas whiskeys. <coughs> so but probably the first weekend of April, I'm going to have essentially a a an open house, 15, 20 people, however many I can get in here. And uh, I would love, I would love, Phil, if you can come up here. We'll talk offline. I would love you if you can come up here. We could do live streaming from here. And my bar, my whiskeys will be totally open. What Anything that anybody wants to drink, I'd love to have everybody, everybody over. Um. It's a much bigger house than the place I lived. I could probably comfortably host 20 people. Uh, but I know if I have 20 people here, they will all be hanging out right here because the kitchen is huge. There's this uh, island in the middle, you know, like a thing in the bottom middle. I have long countertops over here as well as this and as well as this space. I know people aren't going to hang out on the porch. People aren't going to hang out, you know, maybe a few. But for the most part, people are going to hang out here, chatting, hanging out, and have a good time. So. Uh, looking at towards probably the first weekend of April to do that. Uh, and it'll be a live stream and all that kind of So it'll be my first big Eric Waite whiskey event. Now, um, I have a couple extra bedrooms. Currently, they're, I have three bedrooms. Currently, they're empty. One of my brothers might move in with me later this year. Might, might not be until June. We'll see. 
But if someone needed to, needed to camp out, they could camp here uh, out here afterwards as well. Um, Emily Chambers said, your channel is specifically academic. Psalm, that's what I come for. Awesome. I do want info on stuff I, uh, I can buy. That's not what I come to you for. Exactly. Exactly. Guess what, people? There's more than one whiskey tuber, and different whiskey tubers do every do different things. Jason, uh, the mash and drum, he has a much more heavily bourbon in, in, uh, um, <coughs> um, emphasis, right? Um, he does, he, and he does a really great job. Or um, my bourbon journey, or uh, bourbon blind, or any of the other bourbon guys, right? Bourbon buddies. There's all these other bourbon guys. So if you're more interested in bourbon, yeah, I've done bourbons. I'm going to do more bourbons. I'm going to have some Texas whiskey, Texas bourbons. But if you're looking more towards bourbon, that's probably the direction you're going to go. If you're looking more for comedy, and I joke around. I think i got a pretty good sense of humor. But if you're looking a little bit more comedic, you're going to love um, Daniel and Rex um, for the Whiskey Vault and Scott and Bart, uh, Scotch Test Dummies. Um but and then Scotch Fordham, and there's others as well. I'm just mentioning some of them. Um, if you want someone with an authentic accent, you know, you're gonna go Roy Aquavite. Uh, Roy does reviews rarely, but it's only when he's talking about empty bottles and he does a whole stream of them. But you know, different people do different things, and as, as you said, you know, you, you don't come to me for not for uh. The inexpensive stuff, the cheap stuff, because I don't do a whole lot of that. Why don't I do that? Because a whole lot of other people are doing it. Why would I want to do what everybody else is doing? Dustin, DH Silv, too. Hey, I'm going to put the uh, link here real quick. Dustin, if you are if you are available, oops, I think that worked. Did that work? If you want to come on, let me know. Uh, Ross Love Traps, thank you much for uh, uh, coming on. Drinking or not try to finish all of them at the same time. Uh, Emily Chambers, hey, you can tell us wrap. Wait, wait. Can you tell us wrap of what gets opened next week if you don't stream? Uh, oh, so next week will be um, Ranger Creek uh, 36 caliber cast strength. It'll be a bourbon. A really good one. I've already opened it. Um, so, yeah, so that and that review. Or that that video for that visit that distillery will be next Wednesday. Um, I will probably do a live stream. Some of the distilleries I'm waiting to hear back. Oh, by the way, so um, Rick, who is the head distiller, who gave me a tour, uh, he contacted me. I might have him on my channel. We might do a premiere. So we're working out a scheduling issue. Scheduling issues is always something you know. Term guest. So we're probably going to record just him and I dialoguing uh, about whiskey, um, and then I'll post it as a premiere. So um, that's coming up, but I haven't got we haven't got the details uh, worked out yet. But I'm I'm guessing that if I don't go live next Friday, that premiere will post next Friday. But uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Hmm, this is actually really 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 good. Um. Just read. <coughs> me just reading. Charles Ashworth says he's in a carb coma right now. You've been eating like a pasta or something? I think the ice is melting. The one thing I don't want to do, because this is so easy to drink, I don't want to give myself a hangover. Mezcal makes a good margarita. You know what? Hey, Hoyt Hempel, how are you doing? Um, it's funny. I was just before I went live, I was just thinking about mezcals. If you're not familiar with mezcals, mezcals are kind of like the Isla of tequila. Uh, very smoky, earthy. But if you but if you like, you know, uh, Isla peated whiskey, Lafroy, Glagavolin, Ardbeg, um, then you may like um, uh, you make let me like mezcal. And in fact, that's something I'm very much, I don't do anything halfway. I do things 110%. So when I get into something, I really get into something. So I've avoided certain things just because I know people become obsessive, like golf. I've avoided golf just because if I liked it, I would be gone. 
you, you, I'd, I'd have a go Eric's golf channel or something, but um, I could definitely see getting into Mezcal. Uh, I could definitely see getting into that. All right, looks like Dustin's coming on. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go, man. Uh, no, I said a thumbs up, not two thumbs up, and not the middle finger. No. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I would joke <laughs> the middle finger. I would, I, I would never give the middle finger unless you said it. And then... I would either. <laughs> <laughs> <How you doing? laughs> so, uh, what do you got going on, man? Did you got anything drinking? Uh, good going Oh, on? man. So, today was Christmas for me. Oh, nice. Um, so, I don't have all the bottles here. Actually, I, don't, I only have one, but... Okay. I, bottles today it was christmas for me and it even snowed a little bit yeah i, I don't want to brag but I, I i picked up a picked up a few uh special bottles today and i'm i'm, I'm giddy i'm literally giddy today about okay. my so are we, are we gonna do show and tell well um you know what one second i will bring bottles there you go there you go all right one Da -da -da -da. So I'll bring him. I'll bring him back on as soon as he shows up. So it looks like so Dustin. I'm kind of curious about his collection. Um, from what from, from what he says, he apparently he's quite the Springbank fan, and he gets some really good stuff. Uh, why is it not showing up? It's in your dark in the dark. Mm. I can't see you now. This thing's going stupid on me. You still there? I'm gonna bring it back on. Uh oh. Can you guys see him? Okay, there you are. Yeah, oh, okay. It went black for you. That's kind of weird. Yeah, well, you died on me. For, actually, you're actually spinning black right now for me. So, oh, uh, and... give it, a, give us a. It's probably just. See, shit happens, and that's why we drink. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This has been a week for drinking. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you caught my opening comment, but I was talking about uh, the, the three reasons why we drink: to celebrate, to commiserate, and because shit happens. Those are wonderful reasons. I hear a little bit of an echo. I can hear myself. I'll bring my volume down. I, I feel like an issue in the past with you guys. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because I can hear you fine now. And, uh, okay, cool, cool. So what you got going on? I can't see your face now, but it's all good for me. I can see well. I can see yours, and yours is better to look at. <laughs> All right, so, so I just brought the bottles. I didn't bring the boxes, but this is actually why I went on my uh, my buying spree was when going twenty one. Oh, nice! Which um, I believe Whiskey Hound had this in like his uh, Scotch of the Year list. Okay, and um, I can get almost any Glen going I want here locally, except the twenty one. Which is like 150, which is a great price. And, and geographically, where are you located? So I am um, Cincinnati, Ohio. So I buy most of my whiskey in Kentucky. Okay. Um, but I have the access to Ohio, where we we get good prices when we get whiskey. We just okay. don't have a lot of options. Right. Um. So they have price control, right? Volume of just a hair here, Eric. You're a little quiet. Hopefully. So, so you, they have price control there. Yeah, we have price control in Ohio, um, and we just don't get a selection. It it, it kind of sucks. But right. again, price control sort of worth it anyway. Um, and then I went um, a little stupid, and I bought um, I bought this boy right here. Uh, hold on, I I haven't learned how to bring up you as an individual. Um, is the, is that solo layout? Okay, there you go. Hey, I figured it out. <laughs> That's a thirty-year-old. Ooh, nice. Nice. I won't ask how much it costs. Um. Well, six hundred is kind of going right on that one. Well, I'll show you the next one I purchased, which is this. I had it. My so if you if you know Mike whiskey reviews. Uh, By the way, my screen wasn't frozen. I was just in shock. I still can't see you on my screen here on um, oh, the really? 
That's maybe yeah, uh, black and spinning. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, I, I was debating refreshing, but then I thought I'd, I'd lose connection. And we're working on YouTube, so it's all good. Okay, okay, all right. Well, everybody else says it. I think everybody else says it looks fine. Anyway, yeah. What you got? So, a Lafroy twenty-five, nice. I, I'll be honest. This is probably my favorite heavily peated whiskey I've ever had, and I do mean ever had. And there's a website right now that's got it for about three thirty. Three hundred thirty to your house, three thirty with shipping. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a great price. And if you love peated whiskey, this is this is probably my favorite ever wow. old peated whiskey. I, I mean, I've had I've had some good stuff. This okay. is I had, had Bora and Port Ellen, so you so had what, that. I, I can't comment. So what? So what's the impact of the peat? How much of it still sustains at that age? <sighs> It's still a peat bomb. It is still a peat bomb. Okay. Um, but it's got this lemon lime finish, this complexity. Oh man, Eric. It, it's not our big peat, but it's it's not it's not like Freud 10 peat either. It's no, it's nothing like Freud 10. It's it's a matured Lafroy, but it's still super peaty, super complex. It's great stuff. I it's and also, it's fifty-two percent. I love Christmas when it feels like Christmas, and yet you paid for it. <laughs> the box arrives. You know what it is. It's no surprise. And you, the, the paid credit card it. paid for it. The thing was, I didn't know what these were going to taste like. So I've had the who paid for it. The credit card did. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. The credit card. He's a real nice guy. The credit card. Future did. Dustin is paying for this. <laughs> Today, <laughs> Dustin hasn't paid anything. Future Dustin has there to. Do. There, there you go. There you go. There you give All right. So, and I, oh, I should have brought the other bottle. But so, I bought a. I have a Spring Bank Twenty One. Uh, and if you go on Mike's Whiskey Reviews, myself and Keith Malton Man Cave were with oh, Mike okay. reviewed the 2018 Spring Bank Twenty One, which I okay. own. And it's it's a it's a very good whiskey. It's not worth four hundred bucks. Right. Don't buy that one. So what 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 was that one again? Just the Springbank Twenty One from two thousand eighteen. Okay, okay. This it's funny because actually I think I'm gonna be so so I'm having a whiskey gig next weekend, next Friday. Some people are coming over, and I think one of the guys has a Springbank Twenty One. So we'll see how it goes. Well, again, that was the twenty eighteen. This right here, and do you see how dark that is? Um, okay. This is the two thousand nineteen. I've been texting Keith Malted Man Cave trying to get him to split a bottle with me so I can buy a second and not have to buy a whole bottle because it's expensive whiskey. It's really expensive. But so you said the 2019 is much better than the 2018. Night and day better. Okay. Okay. So that's the so key. The, where does where where is the year on it? Did, did it write it in a certain place? It's somewhere down here. Like okay, okay. In the you know how they print that stuff. Unfortunately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Hold on. Spirits. I'm like, hey, which year is that? And they go, I don't know how we can tell. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's hard. Okay. The 19 is port finish plus some um, bourbon. Whereas the 18 is rum and bourbon. Okay. This is this port is incredible. Incredible. But it oh, despite it being Christmas. I'm drinking this right now, which is a bottle I've had for a while, and I paid eighty bucks for. And that is the Long Row fourteen, just heavily peated. Yep. Okay, so it's not one of the reds; it's the heavily peated, just the heavily peated. Okay. Yeah, it, it is a limited edition, and it is fifty-seven point eight. But so I have one, but if, I don't think it's a fourteen. Mine is. Give me a second. Uh. Yeah, mine doesn't have an age statement on it. So mine's a non-age statement, whereas yours has an age statement on it. Oh, so you got the regular one, yeah. Right. Okay, so the, so I just want to, if people aren't familiar with Long Grove, they know the difference is that's an age statement one. So if you go to the store and you go, hey, there's a Long Grove heavily peated, I'll grab that one because that's the one Destin have. No, no, no. You have the 14-year-old. The most ones you're going to see at, at, at your typical store is going to be a non-age statement. That's the main difference between them. Yeah, well, and the, the NAS, though, is... Beautiful whiskey. I yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I, I've never had anything bad from Spring Bank. I've liked everything. It's just some I've liked more than others. All right. I, I'm not going to lie, Eric. It is really weird. I can't see your face here. This is... Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna refresh, and if I didn't hear for a second, I apologize. But You got the link, so you can come right back. Yeah, it's just uh, really awkward talking to you, and, like, I can't... All right. We'll be back in just a second. There it goes. So, uh, for those of you watching, I just told myself I'm not getting hammered tonight. I'm not getting a whole bunch of water since I got out there. But this is what I'm going to be getting into uh, between now and my view, and the view which is going out for my Thursday. This is Nick Eight. He's coming back, and he's back. There you go. Can I can see, see you now, Eric. It's beautiful. Can you okay. Thank you very much. So kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know. So I'm just showing people what I'm drinking. So this is the Ranger Creek. It, they don't call 36 caliber, but they put the little dot on there, so it looks like 36 caliber. Sixty-three <laughs> percent. It's easy to remember because the 36 is inverted to 63. So it's cast strength, excellent. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it, and I visited the distillery, got a, a personal tour of it. My uh, review of this. And the tour of the distillery will post next Wednesday. Hope to hear back from them. Hope to have them on my channel, but we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, all right. So uh, any, any other goodies you got for your belated Christmas? That's it. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I showed you Lafroy. Yeah, yeah. I showed you the four bottles. Yeah. I mean, this is mm. – I'm a Sherry fan and I'm a Pete fan, and I am a Springbank fan, so I can't be happier. There you go. There you go. So let me ask you this. Uh, slightly change the subject. Mm -hmm. um, as a consumer, there, if you're a whiskey tuber reviewer, you you have different concerns and interests because this is what we do in front of the camera versus a consumer. Yes, you have these con similar concerns because you, you want to be able to buy what you want to drink, but you don't. You're not looking to, you know, put a video out of it. Do you have any concerns over this next year with all the stuff going on about um, – sounds like a, a chipmunk. Other <laughs> fun stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so do you have any, any ideas in terms of as a consumer with, with the uh, tariffs and all that crap uh, coming around? Um, so I, I'm going to avoid going into politics. Uh, we can do that off camera, but I'm just not, – not the YouTube channel discussion. Um, so I hate to say it, but as much as last year, I spent a good amount of money on the sort of craft bourbons and craft, um, little, I mean, I didn't buy a lot of Texas whiskey. We don't have a lot here, uh, but I did buy most of what I could get. And, you know, I bought the, the new riffs and others. I, I'm honestly with scotch going up in price. I'm going to buy more. I'm going to keep buying scotch and I'm going to buy less American craft. Yeah. It's just so expensive. So here's one of the other things when people, people are thinking, Oh crap, all the scotch is going to become expensive. Here's what's happening though. And I think Roy experienced this. So did you see Roy's video from last week in which he confesses to being a flipper? Um, was that his live stream or was it? A yeah, it was a live stream. <sighs> I, I saw like uh, I'm not, I'll be honest. I, was, in, in the year, I'm, in, I'm in accounting. Right, right. So if you haven't, I put in like 80 hours this week. So if you haven't, oh, so you need to drink tonight. So <laughs> I, I actually last night was the first drink I had in the last like eight days. Yeah, yeah. And tonight I'm I'm drinking. Yeah, <laughs> and I need it. So um, here's the other thing is, so Roy, you know, he doesn't buy a lot of bottles. He's not into flipping. He's not into all that. But he bought a particular McAllen. He wants a Brora. What he wants is a Brora. Mm. But how do you get the Brora? You buy a McAllen, you flip that one, and then with the money from that, you buy the Brora so you can drink the Brora. So, and I hope I'm not, I, hope I'm not, I don't want to misrepresent him, but this is my take on it. So he bought the McAllen. He then thought he would sell it at auction, make a profit, and then from the money, buy the Brora. And what happened was, it fell flat. I think he lost a little bit of money or maybe went from the McAllen. 
And it was sort of a WTF moment. It's like, what the hell? What what what, what happened with that? <clears throat> a couple of things that happened. One is McAllen didn't state how many bottles there were. So there was a lot of people selling that bottle. So there was a lot of competition as to how many people had that bottle available. So supply and demand, if there's high, if, if there's high supply, you're not gonna make that much money. Number two, um, the United States is the highest in terms of quality Scotch whiskey consumer. And the auction house adds the tariff on after you've won the bid. So if the bid is for, let's just take a number, $600 for a whiskey. If you're doing $600 for a whiskey and you're an American, that's not how much money you're paying because the tariff hasn't been added yet. They add the tariff afterwards. So you're paying $600. Yeah, that's what you got at auction, but you might be paying $900, $1,000. Okay, so in the auction houses, what percentage – of Scotch whiskeys, what percentage of the buyers at the auction houses are Americans? And what percentage of those and what percentage of those Americans are saying, Hasta la vista, I'm not buying because I'm not paying on top of the auction price the tariff. So so Eric, uh, is it legal to actually get those bottles shipped here? Because oh yeah, oh yeah. So in fact, in fact, so when I went to Scotland in 2018. I couldn't carry everything home in my luggage. So yeah, I, took yeah. home, I took home in my luggage, I think 14, and I think another 10 or so, I, I had them shipped through the auction house. All right. So so California, you got you guys are pretty good. So I'm in Ohio. And, again, I don't want to get super political here. Cause Dude, not- I, I don't care on this. If it's related to whiskey, I don't care. It We're is. We're not- well, again, I, my point is I'm not getting into my opinions. I'm just getting into sort of. So Ohio, what we have here is it is legal, legal, legal. We're going to use the, the, the high school girl talk, legal, legal, <laughs> um, to ship wine. I'm, I'm 18. Yeah, right, girl. She's 16. It's sort of it's just really. I don't, I don't actually know the rules. All right, all right move on. <laughs> um, but it's legal to ship wine in, to Ohio. Um it's legal to ship beer into Ohio. It is not legal or illegal to ship liquor into Ohio because it's not on the books. They have said, yes, you can ship beer. Yes, you can ship wine. What? Liquor is not actually on the legal statutes. So there are liquor stores who will ship to Ohio and there are liquor stores who won't. And it's purely based on some stores are like, well, it's we have a wine license, so we can ship. Oh. Others like, well, they don't actually in the law say you can ship liquor, and that's the problem we have here in Ohio. So, and that's the whole U.S. is like, this, so the Scottish. I mean, what places weirdness? Is, so the so the Scotch whiskey house auction house, the Scotch auction house, and I'm on their mailing list, so I get their emails all the time. Um, I don't know what their list is of states they can or cannot ship to. I don't mm-hmm. care because I live in California. I yeah. never pay attention. I don't live in Delaware. I don't live in Illinois. I don't live in what, Massachusetts. I live here. Yeah. So I never paid attention. So I know internally within the United States, shipping laws are very bizarre. What you can ship, where you can ship and not ship. And uh, you, like trying to ship from California to the south, any, just by anywhere in the south. I know Tennessee is a real challenge. But put that aside for a second. The main issue I was trying to get at is is if you're in Scotland, the UK, and you think you're going to make a money on a bottle, if you haven't figured out who your most likely consumer is and know that they're going to respond accordingly, then you're going to shoot yourself in the foot because you haven't figured – because you aren't doing the math. Hey, I'm not just selling this for 600 quid. It's also going to get tariffed. And if I'm hoping an American, which is the most of the, the, the high-quality whiskey producers, consumers are – that I have to keep in mind is whatever I'm trying to sell it for, I need to add on a certain percentage and anticipate they'll be willing to spend that because the most likely thing is I'm guessing the auction houses are going and they're well, well, okay, okay. So and they're, Eric, this is what I was getting at. Yeah. Well, I mean, your point's the same, but 
What's interesting is a lot of the UK shippers, when they ship, they ship it as glassware, not as whiskey. That's not legal in any, in any state. That's not legal to the United States. In fact, that's the majority, that, would, that would be a violation of custom U.S. custom laws, and that could get confiscated. And yet the majority of people shipping whiskey here from the big name whiskey right. shippers in the U.K.? Or not the UK even, the Netherlands, the UK. It's not just in the UK. It's the Netherlands. Are, are you talking about individual people, or are you talking about businesses? Businesses, businesses. Okay, they can. Okay, there's here's not only not only would their customer lose the bottle, they would lose their import export license into the United States. They would never ever be able to export anything to the United States. They would lose their export license, which could be millions of dollars. That's you know what? that's stupid. It's, it's happening a lot, and it's from the biggest. I know. I'm not dropping names here because we're on. Oh, you know, I know. And, but I, I can tell you some of the biggest shippers to the U.S. right now that my friends are using and your friends are using are shipping glassware, right. not whiskey. Well, so they could lose a bottle somewhere. If Customs gets finds out about it, um, the, ex, the importer, exporter, um, well, Vandalay. so what happens when that ha when that happens? Well, I get all my stuff through Vandalay Industries. Well, what usually happens when it, a bottle gets taken, they just ship a new one. They they, they have extras, yeah, sure, to ship sure. it, and they take they eat the cost. Right. Okay. Sure. That if it breaks or whatever, sure, or it gets lost, sure. <coughs> no, no, <laughs> even if like the customs <laughs> takes it, and they go. Yeah, and but if customs takes it, it and uh, if you're losing it, you could lose your import export license. That's that, it's not the individual bottle that's the big issue is losing mm -hmm. the license issue. Yeah, that could be. A I, I, I get the I get the impression we're not that strict on it though. Like, it's one of those things that they make money off of. So they're like, mm. I don't know. So I I didn't work for U.S. Customs, but I worked alongside U.S. Customs, um, and so I have a general familiarity with how they do things and how yeah. things run. And there's a difference between how what things are like as you as individual as a as a uh, tourist coming and going versus a business, and it's the businesses that they're more going to go after than any tourist doing something. So, anyway, individual though. So, 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 did you get my Vandalay uh, Industries uh, reference? You know, it's funny is that Vandalay is like red flagging all over my head, and I'm like, it's from, I, from, it's from Seinfeld the movie. It's from Seinfeld. God. Oh, I knew it. Seinfeld, Seinfeld, Seinfeld. <laughs> Nicely done, Eric. So anyway, if anybody's a bourbon fan, and I'll give my full review later, I'm just getting this past the neck for This is freaking killer. Um, I'm absolutely loving this one. Again, Ranger Creek, 36 caliber. Really, really, really loving this one. Um, at the end of – so I've been on for almost an hour and 15 minutes, so I'm going to uh, wind it down in just a minute. Drink plenty of water before I go to bed. Um, at the end of this uh, Texas whiskey series, uh, I'm going to do my top five favorite Texas whiskeys. But I can't get those. I don't live in Texas. Why are you reviewing them? <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> Fucking <what? laughs> Why are you reviewing Lot 40 cash strength? I can't get that here in the United States. Uh, Lot 40 is awesome, Eric. I have a bottle. I'm going to do a Canada month. I'm going to review that one and hopefully uh, oh. do some live streams with it. I've never gotten a bottle, but I've had a I've had a pour at uh, Mash and Drum's house. So I did a swap with Trini and C. Uh, I, I got them a uh, 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 Ardbeg drum, and they sent me that one. That was a bit of a challenge, uh, getting that across the border, but that's a whole other story. Uh, anyway... So I'm going to do a top five, um, not just from this trip, but from the uh, first trip I did uh, through Texas. Uh, I'll do that at the end of the series. And then I'm also going to do uh, a – I'm going to try to do a blind. I want to do – and maybe I'll bring some other people on, some of the people who live here locally. I don't know how, how big of a bourbon fans they are. I'm going to do a – trying to do a Kentucky versus Texas bourbon and try to do a blind. And what I might try to do – I'll have to talk this out with Jason – Maybe I'll send Jason some. He can send me some, and we'll cross bourbon, and then we'll try to do a side by side new comparison. It's just an idea I got rolling around in my head. Something to look forward to. Uh, it's, 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 it's real hard to beat the, the liquor, huh? 
I'm sorry, do you think Texas and Kentucky bourbon really taste enough alike? No. Oh, so you'd be too easy to tell which one's which? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yes, yes. Particularly Jason. Jason's got a much better bourbon palate than I do. Well, but I mean, I, it's, for honest, fun. I, it's for it's for it's for science. It's for fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I I'll be honest. I I'm the, I'm the one guy who just keeps saying Texas should abandon bourbon and focus on malt because I Robert, think Robert, Robert you didn't hear that. Robert, you didn't hear that. He, Robert Licorice is in the house. I, you could get well, you know what? Uh, Robert. Heretic! Heretic! Malt. Heretic! Malt. Malt. Nee! Malt. Nee! Nee, nee. I'm telling you, I'm, I would, I would love Iron Root to do a malt whiskey because they're bourbon. But yeah, it has like I've, I've only had Harbinger. Like, did and you get the so reference? much potential? Did you get my knee reference? No, I didn't. Ah, uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Nee. See, and it's it's been a long time, Eric. I'm sorry. You're from that screwed up generation that didn't watch Monty Python. I, I've seen Monty Python. It, it's just it, I was very young. <laughs> so in my household, man, you had to be able to quote it as if you're quoting the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. So it's about a quarter after six. <clears throat> Time to drink some water. I'm going to finish this off. Um, thank you very much for coming on, Dustin, and sharing uh, with us uh, some of those recent uh, finds that you got. Looks like some good stuff there. And uh, I want to thank everyone here for uh, tuning in on this Friday. And I hope you were enjoying a whiskey, whether it's to celebrate, commiserate, or just say, what the hell, man? What the hell was that? What the hell, man? So, in anyway, it, all right. Are you, done are you done typing? Robert just said he's doing malts coming up. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so all right. Robert and I are on the same page. We see the future, and it's going to be great. Well, sooner sooner or later, he's going to he's going to be like doing uh, um, um, cognac and armagnac or something similar to that. So I'm sure he'll be doing that as well. Because I'm always a fan. All right, Maybe. man. Hey, thanks for coming cheers. on, and cheers to everyone. Everybody have a great weekend, and enjoy the whiskey, whether you're commiserating, celebrating, or just saying what the hell, man. All right, cheers. <laughs>